Hey everyone, this is Kirk Masson from Masson Labs. Today we're going to be talking about Adobe Camera Raw and using Masson Labs in Adobe Camera Raw, as well as talking about the differences between Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. So, in general, Lightroom is really built for the high volume photographer, for someone who shoots a lot of weddings, portrait sessions, events, things where you're shooting hundreds if not thousands of images and delivering a lot of images. Adobe Camera Raw, on the other hand, is part of Photoshop. And the way that you access Adobe Camera Raw is through Bridge. So I will show you in a second how that all works. But in general, Adobe Camera Raw is for people who are doing extensive retouching or more complicated edits on their photos that you can't get just through Lightroom or using presets. And there's some pros and cons to both. So let me show you what I mean. So if you're using Adobe Camera Raw, uh, two of the biggest kind of reasons why you would do that, well, the biggest reason overall is retouching. And what's interesting is that in Photoshop, you can work with a raw file as a smart object. And I'll show you what that, that, how that works in just a minute. But basically, if you're doing a lot of retouching to an image and you open it through Adobe Camera Raw, you can work on that image in Photoshop and do a lot of adjustments to it and still go back and double click on that smart object, that, that raw file as a layer and re-edit it in the raw editor, which is pretty cool. If you were working in Lightroom and you wanted to do more extensive retouching, you could also open it in Photoshop, but most of the time people open them as JPEGs or some kind of uh, final photo to work on, something that's already been processed. And at that point, it's not really possible to re-edit the photo at its base raw level. So, um, yeah, so that's one big reason why you would use ACR. Uh, the second, so the reason you would use Lightroom, on the other hand, is if you have high volume, uh, a large volume of images, uh, you don't need to do a lot of really extensive retouching, like you're not doing frequency separation, skin smoothing, things like that. Um, and then one huge advantage to Lightroom over ACR that's come out since Lightroom 7.3 is the ability to sync all of your images across multiple devices. So with Lightroom, you can do like, you can sync to your mobile phone and or your, your iPad or whatever and keep editing wherever you are. It, it has a cloud system for sharing those libraries. And that's pretty cool. Uh, that's not something that exists uh, within ACR. All right, so let's get to actually using Mass and Labs within ACR. So this is the Bridge, uh, you know, image browser. It's a very similar in a lot of ways to Lightroom. Uh, if you were to compare Lightroom and Bridge and ACR you would have basically all the same components. They would just look a little bit different. They're laid out a little bit differently. Um, to do an edit in ACR is really simple. You just navigate to your image, double click on it, and it brings up the ACR window where you do all of your edits. And you'll notice that everything is laid out. So on the right side here, We've got tabs that lay out all of the controls that you would normally find in Lightroom. They're just laid out in a little different way. They're just laid out under these tabs going sideways. So you've got basic Im image adjustments, the tone curve section, detail, so that's like sharpening, noise reduction, etc. Uh, HSL adjustments. Unfortunately, you can't show them all at the same time, which is kind of annoying. So you have to kind of tab through them. Uh, you've also got split toning, lens correction, effects like grain, vignetting, uh, camera calibration. So these are the primaries that are normally at the bottom in Lightroom. And then my favorite section, which is the preset section, uh, where you will do most of your adjustments if you're using the Mass and Labs three-step workflow. So once you have the image opened, you just select the preset that you want to use, click on it. And then unlike Lightroom, where you would just scroll to the top and then do uh, exposure and white balance and tint, you have to go back over to this tab that says that's the basic tab. And in here, you can adjust temperature and tint and exposure. So I'm going to just increase the exposure of this image. 
and I'm going to add just a little bit of green and the tin slider, like about that much and a little bit of warmth. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go back to the preset tab and I'm also going to do all soft. So that is my basic edit. If I was to, yeah, I could hit default and show you before, and here is after. So at this point, most people would just hit open image and it would appear in Photoshop and you would edit it as a JPEG. I think the coolest part about ACR is actually opening it as a smart object. I think it's really like one of the main reasons you would want to use ACR, especially when you have Lightroom available to you, is that you can open it as a smart image just by holding down shift. So if you hold down shift, you'll notice down here at the bottom, it goes from open image to open object. So I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to open it as an object. So now we are in Photoshop. We've done our basic three-step Maston Labs edit, which was preset, exposure, and white balance. And you'll see, if it's kind of hard to see on your screen here, but it's got the little smart object icon under it. So I can add other, other adjustments to this. Um, so let's just add, whoops, hold on one second here. Let's just add it under here. Okay. Oh, let's do, let's do a, gosh. Let's just do a hue saturation adjustment. <laughs> Personally, I probably wouldn't do this in an edit in ACR with a smart object because you can do all of this in the Adobe Camera Raw editor itself, but I'll just give you an example of how you can modify the two together. So I'm going to do a adjustment towards more saturation here. And now, now say like I've, this is very, very basic. I've done some adjustments to the photo in Photoshop. Maybe I've done some uh, dodging and burning, other things on top of this smart object layer. I can always go back to the smart object, double click it, open it up in Adobe Camera Raw, and then adjust it again. And all of the things that I did in Photoshop will just stack on top of it as layers. I think that's pretty cool. Um, for example, say I wanted to go a lot brighter with my initial raw adjustment, I could just go back in, bump up the exposure, hit OK, and now the image is a lot lighter with this hue saturation adjustment on top of it. So I think that's pretty darn cool. The disadvantage to this is that you don't have that really fast um, file and catalog browsing system that you have in Lightroom. So it's a lot harder to kind of jump through these different doorways to get back to, to bridge and get everything synced up. And for example, like editing one image and then applying it to all the rest, it's a little more cumbersome than if you were in Lightroom where Lightroom is basically, I mean, in all honesty, it's a catalog first, like an excellent sorting program that also lets you edit. Uh, Photoshop, the Photoshop Adobe Camera Raw way of editing is really like editing heavy with a little bit of catalog management attached to the back end. Yeah, in case he's like, exactly. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to open another uh, image for you. Whoops. So here I am back in bridge. And I'm just going to go through a few edits so you can see one other thing I wanted to point out. So let's see here. This is by Roman Lisavoy, one of our community members. It doesn't say what preset to use or anything, but uh, I'm just going to choose whatever I want. So I'm going to go to the preset panel here and let's do Fuji Color Pushed. Do 400H pushed one stop. I'm going to go to the basic panel and then warm it up. 
and I'm going to add a little bit of green again. I'm also going to increase the exposure just a tiny, tiny bit. So there you go. There's a very basic, beautiful edit. Really, really simple. Here is the before and here's the after. One thing I wanted to point out, and this is really important, is the rendering engine for Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom are identical. So any kind of edit that you want to do in Lightroom, it will look exactly the same in ACR. And if you are an ACR user and you want to start using Lightroom, it'll look exactly the same in Lightroom. Um, after the Adobe 7.3 release for Lightroom, they, this is really nerdy, they've, they've made everything very universal in the back end. So presets are now .xmp files, and it's a shared library between ACR and Lightroom. So they're literally using the same presets in both, in both places that you're editing in. Before the 7.3 update, you had to make a preset version for ACR that had a .xmp extension, and then you had to make one for um, Lightroom that had a oh, LR cat extension. Yeah. Anyway, so that's a really important thing to know because a lot of people wonder, like, am I going to get the same results? Yes, you're going to get the same results and the workflow is exactly the same. You're just working in an environment where the tools are reorganized in a different way and you're trading off really high-end retouching through the Adobe Camera Raw route versus really, really good and fast file management if you're, or image management if you're working with a lot of images. Those are the two big differences. So I'm just going to open this image um, again as a smart object. And here you go. There's your image. You can start editing this. You can retouch it if you wanted to do um, any kind of like cloning or anything to get these flyaways uh, off of here, off of the back of her head. Photoshop, I think, has a far superior uh, cloning tool, or not a cloning tool, but like a you know, a healing brush. Yes, I'm going to say healing brush. Uh, it's just much more superior. Uh, one thing is some tools don't work if the image is a smart object. I forgot to say that. So for example, I need to turn this into um, a final image or a final, uh, a flat um, JPEG if I want to do like really extensive uh, liquify, um, hair removal, things like that, some of those things cannot happen to a smart layer. But for the most part, most adjustments can be applied to a smart layer. So there you go. Very, very simple. Um, in my opinion, if I was a commercial photographer uh, or if I did retouching for a client, I would most certainly be in the bridge ACR Photoshop route. I would use that system. For the majority of photographers, I would say if, if you are a working photographer in weddings, families, portraits, events, then definitely stay with Lightroom. You just have a much better workflow overall. So I hope that was helpful. Hope you found it interesting. We have live edits uh, every single week. We tackle different, uh, different subjects every time. Um, we wanted to cover every base, so today was Adobe Camera Raw, but we've got a lot of other really cool things coming up. If you go to our Facebook page, we've got a calendar of events. You can see all the live edits that are coming up. And then I also highly encourage you to join our Mass and Labs community on Facebook. It's a super helpful community of over 50,000 people who are eager to help you and show you what Mass and Labs can look like on your images. You can just drop a raw file in there you have like 20 people jump in and give you sample edits, and we all want you to succeed. So come and join us, and also join us next week for our next Facebook Live. All right, thank you.